All right, hey everybody. Um, just wanted to record this quick video to show you how I'm achieving automatic product sales on my new website. So I'm um, sharing my screen and I just want to kind of walk through um, a little bit of everything from the goal um, to what I'm using on the WordPress backend to how I did it in code um, and sort of just shed a little bit of light on my approach to this. Um, not all of my code may be as efficient as it could be because I'm not primarily a developer, but um, I'm pretty happy with the implementation and it seems to work really well. Um, so I just kind of wanted to show you behind the scenes of what's going on here. So first the goal. Um, I have my website, I have a product section. Um, I'm doing this all locally, by the way. Um, and I'm listing these products here. And basically what happens is you can click into a product and you can, I'm going to move myself down here. Um, and you can click on the button to download it and you get a Gumroad overlay. Um, so I'm using Gumroad for all the product sales. And on Gumroad, you can have uh, discount codes. And the way that Gumroad handles discount codes is it basically generates um, a new URL for you per discount code. So it'll be your gumroad.com slash your product URL slash the discount code. Um, and that will then it will automatically apply the discount to the product if that URL is hit, um, which is really handy for this implementation. I'm not sure how I would have done it otherwise um, but having that unique url is really is really key so just so you know that's how that is working um, so what i want to have happen the goal here is i want to be able to put a product on sale put one or more products on sale on my website um, i want to show in in a few places around the site like the navigation um, here obviously in the product list um, whether it's on sale, how much it's on sale for, and it kind of entice people to click into it. Um, on the homepage, if we scroll down, I want to be able to put maybe like little sale tags here um, and a few other places around the site where the products appear. I want all that to happen automatically. So my desired functionality is I set um, a start date and an end date for a promotion or a sale for one or more products. Um, and when it's that time to start the sale. It will automatically update the site, put that product on sale, change the URL in PHP. Um, so what's happening is it's actually generating uh, the right code. It's not like using CSS to hide the button and show a different button or something. It's actually just spitting out the correct um, buttons essentially with the um, different href um, attribute. And I want that to all happen automatically. Um, I also wanted the timer, which was one of the trickiest parts of this. This is actually a fairly simple implementation without that timer. Um, I wanted the countdown timer that counts down to the expiration date. And then when it expires, I wanna automatically take uh, that sale off the website, which is really important because I don't wanna have to go back and make sure that if I have a sale ending at midnight, I might not wanna stay up till midnight or I may not have access to a computer on that day or something. Um, so I want all this to be automated. So I want to dive into a little bit of how I did that. So first thing is on the back end. So this is behind the scenes of mattelpinski.com. Um, I have a custom post type called products and I have all my products here and I'm using um, uh, advanced custom fields and advanced uh, columns pro, I believe it is, um, to sort of get the right data in here. So I, I like showing the ID um, this is really handy for custom short codes that I have uh, implemented as well. I can just come in here and grab the ID and it'll pull it into a blog post or something like that. Um, but I have my products listed. If I click into a product, um, I have all the product metadata here that I can enter. Um, lots of stuff that comes in handy for me, but the, the point of interest here is the product sale section. So um, schedule a sale. I can just say yes. We have some conditional logic that shows some more fields. Is the sale currently active? I'll say no. Um, I'll click in here and set a start date. So maybe the start date is, uh, let's say tomorrow. I'll set an expiration date for, uh, let's see, Sunday night at 9 p.m. And the sale code. So this is something that I have, um, set up in advanced custom fields. So I have this custom dropdown. I went through and I actually made a plan for 
what I want to, when I want to offer promotions um, and how, what the percent off is going to be for that product. Um, so behind the scenes, what it's doing is I'm not going to show that to you because then you'll know what my discount codes are, but behind the scenes, it's inserting um, essentially the right part of the product URL um, into the URL spot. So this is really uh, dynamic. So I'm just picking this and then the val this is the label, the value that's getting inserted is the correct discount code um, that it's adding to the URL, if that makes sense. Um, so I can pick a sale code. So let's see, you know, 4th of July is coming up and then just enter what the sale price is. So this is sort of something I have to do manually as I have to know what the sale price is, um, you know, after the discount is applied. And this is a number that I'm actually going to show in certain places around the site. So if I do that, um, actually, let's see, um, let's do it. It's 1203. Um, let's do this. Let's say that the sale actually started today at 9 a.m. So it should currently be active. I'll say yes, the sale is currently active. We'll apply this. We're doing it to kickstart your freelancing career. So right now there's nothing, no sale on the website. We have a bestseller. Um, there's nothing in the navigation or anything else around the site. So I'll go ahead and update this. I'll sort of show you the implementation um, from a UI standpoint, and then I'll dig into the code a little bit and how I did it. All right, so now if I go back here and I refresh, what I should see is a couple things changed. I have a sale indicator in the global navigation, which is awesome. No matter where you are, you know that there's a sale going on. And then if I scroll down to kickstart your freelancing career, it adds a sale ribbon, um, the price, the original price, and a sale flag. Um, if I go back to my homepage here and I scroll down, I can see that this is on sale here as well. So anywhere this appears on the site, whether it's in a blog article um, or otherwise, um, the sale flag will appear uh, anywhere that the product shows up. When you actually click into the product, um, it adds a timer right here to the middle. It adds the discounted price, the original price, um, and then the button, instead of linking to, um, I can't actually tell whether this is right or not. It's $20, maybe it should be 18. I'm not, I'm not sure the 40% might be different than the $18 that I entered. Um, but it is, it is obviously working, it's not $27. So what it's doing is it's getting the right URL um, and loading that uh, as the Gumroad overlay. So it's very, very simple um, from that perspective. The really cool part is when this timer ends, um, well, when it's counting down, I have it changing colors. So within three hours, I think it turns yellow and within one hour it turns red uh, and then it disappears. And when it disappears, it's basically what it's doing is it's resetting the status or the, the value rather of this field in the back end to no. So it's just comparing the expiration date to the current date. And if the expiration date um, is, less than the current date. So basically if the, if the you know, current date is past the expiration date, um, it's going to set this field to no, and that is what I'm using in my if else statements to determine whether I should be showing sale information or not, or sale HTML or not. Um, that's really the driving factor. This is just, this field is just sort of a conditional logic, you know, just so I can clean up uh, you know, and not have all these visible at the same time. But this is really, this is the field that's driving whether things are shown or not on the website. Um, so that will happen automatically. So let me see if I can do this real quick. Um, you know, June 4th at 12.06. Um, let me see if I can make it, you know, 12.08 June. Uh, oh, sorry, June 4th at, let's see. If I got the time zones right, time zones were a little bit tricky. But basically what I'm doing is I'm forcing, I'm in New York, I don't want to have to worry about UTC time and having it line up with when I might be tweeting about it or something. Um, so I just set everything, I just forced everything, the expiration date and the current time in PHP, I just set them both to use New York time. Um, and that way when it's comparing the dates, it's comparing the right time zones together. Um, and that should work for anyone in the world. Um, at least I hope it does, kind of hard to test. But let me update this real quick, June 4th. So if I update this and go back to the page, perfect, so it's red, it's got 15 seconds left. 
So if this works, when it's done, it should automatically reload the page. In the JavaScript plugin I'm using for the countdown, um, I'm automatically, I think that's how it worked, I'm automatically refreshing the page when the countdown ends. So what it's doing is right now, it's resetting that field um, to no, which will hide everything, and then it's reloading the page. But when it reloads the page, that value is no, so it's not showing anything. It's only showing the original information now. Um, so now if I go back into the back end and I refresh this, it's no and it hides everything. So it's actually resetting this field to no as well and it's hiding all those fields. So that's all happening automatically, which is really, really cool and very powerful. Um, so, all right, so let me look into the code a little bit of how I'm, how I'm doing this. So um, this is really the, the meat of, of what's going on here. So basically this is, this is the, the PHP, WordPress PHP template for my product detail page. So that's this page right here. So what I'm doing is basically I'm including this PHP file that I wrote, which is really just setting up all the variables and all the values. So I'm setting a time zone that I want to use for the different dates. Um, I'm saving a raw sale expiration date with that time zone. So this is when the sale expires. Um, then I'm formatting the date time output uh, for the expiration date for comparison. Um, I'm saving the, doing the same exact thing for the start date. Um, and then just formatting a couple things in here, save expiration, date, time, values. Uh, so this is for use in the JavaScript plugin. So I'm just sort of setting these values um, so that I can plug the expiration day, month, year, hours, minutes, all into the plugin. Um, <clears throat> then I'm doing the same exact thing for the current time. I'm getting the current time with that time zone, so, uh, formatting it so that I can compare two, two numbers, essentially, that are the same format. Um, and then I'm just getting the difference between them. Uh, and that is going to be used um, really just to set the color. So all this stuff is really just to set the color. Um, if the time is less than a certain, you know, if there's only three hours left or one hour left, it's going to change the color. So that's all I'm doing here. This is just configuration. Um, and then after that, this is really the powerful part of this. So uh, I'm just comparing the dates at that point. If the current date is less than or equal to the start date, so basically if the sale hasn't started yet, then update the field value to no. And this is happening on page load because um, it's PHP. So um, the next, so if that hasn't happened, then check and see if the current date time is less than the expiration date. And that's when I know that the sale is active. Um, otherwise, if that's not true, it's going to come down here and it's just going to update the sale. That means the only other condition is that the sale is actually over. Um, so at that point, I want to update the sale active field to no and the sale schedule field to no. So both of those are no. Uh, we saw that in practice a couple of seconds ago. Um, so after that, so that all happens before all this HTML gets rendered for the page. And basically the first thing I'm doing is setting the status of that field. Um, is it yes or no? Then down here, I'm getting this, the, uh, the value of that field. If it's yes, if the sale's active, then render this HTML code with the right button and the right URL. Um, and you can see it's sort of, I'm sort of building the Gumroad URL plugin right here. Um, and then otherwise just display the normal stuff basically is what's going on. Um, and then down here is where I'm plugging in uh, those PHP variables for the expiration day, month, and year. Um, I'm saving them as JavaScript variables, plugging them into the simply countdown plugin that I found. And that's all what's running the timer. Um, up here, that's all getting applied to, let's see right here, the simply countdown uh, timer. So that's that's the the gist of it. Then the only other thing I'm doing is around the different pages, like for example, on the home page where all those products are listed, any place the products are listed, what's going on is all I'm doing to display that little ribbon is just checking to see if the sale active field um, is yes or no. So if it's yes, then I'm gonna display the ribbon, otherwise I'm not gonna do anything. Um, same thing on the products page. Um, if the sale is active, then display the little flag. Um, 
And then down here, I'm doing the same thing. If the sale is active, then spit out the discounted price and cross out the, um, the original price and things like that. Otherwise, just display the normal content. So that's really all I'm doing. Um, so like I said, it, without, the, um, without the countdown timer, this is really quite simple um, because I don't, have to, I don't have to do a lot of, of what I did. Um, so uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, I have to do some of this comparison, but I don't have to, you know, there's a bunch of extra steps that I took for the, for the timer to work right. Um, so that's really all that's going on. Um, and I'm, I'm really happy with the result. Um, if at least for this global navigation is a little bit different, the implementation. So if I have to basically check and see if one or more of the products is on sale, display this here, otherwise take it away. Um, so that's how that's working. So I can have two different sales running at two different times. And uh, as long as one of them is active, that sale flag will show up in the global navigation. Um, so anyway, I hope that that was helpful and insightful. Um, it was fun to do a little behind the scenes video. So I hope that's helpful if anyone is looking to do something similar. Um, I know this is sort of a specific implementation, but um, hopefully it'll be helpful to somebody. So thanks.